understand that too. He was actually here early. <laughs> you sounded pretty good when she was talking about you. <laughs> well, I didn't know what y'all were going to say, so I went here. <laughs> I thought I'd show you a picture of our garden first. You see, I'm in your way. That's all right. Wait, let me get over here. Now I won't be in your way. That's better. Like Perfect. That. Huh? Yeah, you're against the wall. <laughs> uh, see our tall corn? But if y'all didn't come to see that, y'all come to see that. That's uh, that's coming out of Bracken Cave. Y'all been to Bracken Cave? Yeah. There's going to be 20 million motor bats in that cave. And uh, every year uh, in winter, they go to Mexico, and that's where they meet the males. And then around the old February sometime, they come back and have their babies in the back of the cave. And uh, about 50% of them survive, so there'll be 30 million bats in that cave. That's what the cave looks like. It's all the W, 3009. And there in the back, that one, it knew I needed a picture up close, so it came to the office and hung a wall so I got this. <laughs> and there's the young one, when they come out, I mean, they're coming out in swarms. And this young one, he got bumped to the ground, caught it all out of wind, pretty soon he crawled up on the rock, took off. And now we're looking inside the cage. See, this is solid bat thing. 20 million mother bats. After the younger barn, there's probably 30 million bats in it. And they got these figures by uh, uh, photographing bats from a square foot. And they photographed the ceiling where they were hanging, and they went back later, and they got the measurements from the ceiling, you know, how many thousand square feet times so many bats per square foot they come up to 20 feet. That's how thick they're hanging out. These are all the young. There's the mother bat. Now when you're a barn, she's hanging upside down. And that little bat has to come out there and clean on somewhere. You have to hang on her and you know get its first milk. Then it's gotta hang on to the ceiling somewhere. So uh, there's probably 50% more calories. This bat only has one baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there may be twins, but I think it's just one. And I didn't take this picture. Uh, bat conservation in the anchor. Bat there is called a moth. And when these bats come out, they go up as high as 10,000. <coughs> and they can pick them up on radar. However, the main food for this bat is a corn earworm moth. And they followed the corn earworm moth up here from Mexico. See, they're planting corn in Mexico earlier than they do here. And uh, of course that moth flies up at 10,000 feet. And the moth itself can be in such uh, thick colonies that they can even be picked up on radar. And probably without the bats eating those corn or moss, uh, we probably couldn't build corn. It would take a heck of a lot more pesticides to build corn. And here's the one that's going to get itself a drink. See his tongue sticking out? And they drink like, like a Martin does and they skim over the water. And there's one that caught a sparkling. Mm -hmm. This is not one of the bats that live in the back of the cave. That's a good one. They eat those scorpions. Mm -hmm. Little bats. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's three brown bats. We had a little apricot tree before it died, not too far from our front door. And we walked down on one of our mailbox. And Three or four bats hanging up in it, but a different bat, just a brown bat, just not the one that's in the Bracken Cave. And this is what the floor of the Bracken Cave looks like. See all those bat or mouse droppings? Those are bat droppings, but just like the mouse droppings. And this is a beetle, that's the larva of this beetle. 
and that larva hatches and uh, then eventually it pupates into a beetle and what they're doing, they're feeding on the guano on the bottom of the cave. In the back of the And there are two species of that beetle. One of the herbivore that feeds on the guano is another one, the carnivore. It feeds on dead bats only. And uh, <clears throat> when I first moved out, out there in 19, I don't know, when you moved out there, 68, and there's an old man lived behind us on Warbach Road. His name was Warbach. And I asked him if he knew anything about the Warbach, about the Bracken Cave. He said, yep. Yeah. He said, my folks bought that cave in 1906. They started harvesting it in 1896. And he said, we used to camp in that cave. And they would get it out, uh, clothes lined it out the front. Later on, there's a big room in the, in the far back end. And that room has got a cathedral ceiling that goes all the way up like this. And uh, it's 100 feet from the top of the ground to the, to the bottom of the cave or the grotto down there. But that uh, cathedral ceiling had stopped about those 16 or 20 feet from the top of the ground. So they got some surveyors down there and they pinpointed exactly where that, you know, the point of that ceiling came up, where that cathedral ceiling came up. And they got a black guy to dig a shaft all the way down. So now they got a shaft about six foot in diameter. And when they, after they did that, then they could, uh, you know, put a, uh, hang a pulley on a, on a scaffold above, I guess you'd say, and then hoist it out the back of the cave. You wouldn't have to uh, close line it or drag it all the way to the front of the cave. And that big room is about uh, 40 feet by 40 feet. And the guano is, I don't know how deep it is, I went down in there with a 20-foot uh, rebar, and I poked it down, kept going down, so I only had about two feet sticking out. And when I pulled it up, at the bottom of it was crude oil. <laughs> One year, when we had that flood, I went down there to see, you know, what happened to the cave, and as soon as I walked down there, there was a, a uh, creek cut in the guano. It was about four and a half, five foot wide, and it depends on the depth of the guano all the way back. And I said, oh my gosh, the back room is going to be full of guano, we won't be able to harvest. No, it went in somewhere. Y'all are drinking it if you drink it the <laughs> It just disappeared on the ground. Well, there are two species of bats, like I say, one of them feeds on any dead bat, and the other one just feeds on guano and chops the guano all up. So actually, the stuff we harvest, if it looks like little mouse droppings, well, that's that gone. But the stuff we harvest and sell is a powder. All we sell really is beetle poop. We're not selling bat gone. But how would we ever sell beetle poop? Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, carnivore uh, beetle, it, uh, if a dead bat hits the ground, it eats it up. I mean, licks the bones clean. And any dead animal or any, any animal gets down in there and uh, dies, it licks it clean. I mean, there is nothing but a pure white skeleton. Well, Ali Marbach told me that years ago, somebody gave the uh, gave University of Texas a small whale that beached and was dead. And they wanted it. And they wanted the skeleton. So what they did was drag that uh, whale down into the cave and the uh, carnivore beetles lick that stuff and clean it up. Now during World War II, uh, the government took over Bracken Cave. And uh, they had sentries all around 